as go good as far. usual. Yeah, but yeah, at least <laughs> yeah, a little. Uh, you're pretty. You know, you're sounding pretty good, actually. Yeah, nice, uh, nice, clear sound there. Good, um, great, yeah. good. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, small business in Japan. I kind of wanted to focus on today. Uh, yeah, and small businesses are really interesting in Japan. I've had two small businesses actually. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. A bar, Jeff's World Bar, of course, right? right? And Jeff's English School, which yeah. went through three name iterations over the years. <laughs> it was first world world language school. Jeff's World Language School, I guess, oh. was the first one, and then it went to World Language and Arts. World, uh, language. and then it was simply Jeff's English School. And okay. Jeff's, Jeff's World Bar and Jeff's English School were under the umbrella company of. Uh, Morrow Enterprises. Yeah. Morrow Enterprises. Okay. Yeah. You know what Morrow Enterprises stands for, don't you? Oh, what does that say? Me. Morrow <laughs> Enterprises. <right? laughs> there you go. Yeah. Means, it just uh, kind of happened like that. The I'll pay you tomorrow enterprises, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I give you money for a hamburger today what, what, what was uh, that one can I'll i get hamburger you, today i yeah. pay you tuesday for yeah, hamburger gladly today. Pay you tuesday yes that's right. yes yeah. that's right that's right <laughs> yeah. so i enjoyed doing small businesses in japan i've known of many people who've had small businesses in japan yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. small mom and pop businesses which seem to kind of have thrived more than in america because i remember as a kid you know small businesses in america yeah you know, like your mom and pop shop, you know, the small candy store on the corner, mm -hmm. right? A little soda store, right? right. Or an ice cream shop, right? right. And then small grocery stores, right? Mm -hmm. And then the big conglomerate companies came in and took over everything, right? Right, right, yeah. I mean, yeah, in my neck of the woods uh, in Iowa, I saw that happen to family farms, you know? Oh, I mean, right. I mean, Farms were never small in Iowa, you know, and we were talking about, you know, 800 to 1600 acres is a pretty typical farm in, in Iowa when I was growing up. But now it's like you put 10 of those together. So it's like 16,000 acres and, you know, all under one uh, corporation conglomerate, you know, that's controlling it and, and uh, not doing a very good job, in my opinion. But that's another story. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. I've, I've heard, I've seen stories on that and I've seen YouTube videos where a conglomerate will come in and, and just take out all the farmland, right? The useful farmland and plant one crop. Right. So it's right. a singular crop, which is actually not good for the environment, right? Exactly. In, 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 you know, the long term. Yeah. Growth. Well, well, yeah, I mean, you know, try and make it very quickly, you know, but where I grew up, you know, one farm usually rotated their crops, you know, they, they had some cattle uh, or and or pigs and oftentimes chickens, you know, for, you know, like the, the family's daily needs, as well as being able to sell the surplus and so on, um, you know, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. you know, some uh, milk cows and so on and uh, some cow, uh, cattle that were raised for beef, but then they had, for example, a field of corn and a field of soybeans and they would rotate those. Uh, so that, you know, and use the natural fertilizer from uh, the livestock in order to, you know, to, to keep a natural, uh, you know, natural recycling going there. And it, it worked wonderfully for, for generations. And then corporations came in and mm. through economies of scale, you know, their interest in making the cheapest meat, you know, or the cheapest uh, corn or the cheapest That's soybeans right. or whatever, you know, it uh, kind of destroyed the whole industry, I think. Yeah, and a lot of the corn is used to grow to to feed cows and feed pigs and whatnot to grow right. them, right? Yeah. So it's it's, it's, it's of... not it's not the sweet corn that we think of, right? It's 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 field corn that yeah, uh, basically it's animal fodder, it's animal animal food. Uh, wow, for the cattle. Yeah, that's that's unbelievable. You know a lot more about that than I do because you know being from Pennsylvania, we didn't have the huge conglomeration farms yeah. like that. Somewhat we did, but there are still a lot of family farms in Pennsylvania. Yeah. So uh, Iowa, uh, Iowa is uh, generally every year, number one or number two in the amount of corn and soybeans that are grown in the United States. But wow. let me ask you, where do you think is the number one producer of sweet corn in the United States? I'm not sure, but California or Idaho or one of those actually states. i heard sure. florida. So florida i heard florida maybe so maybe yeah. so right yeah. okay interesting, i was right? i was surprised you know i mean i see so much corn i just assumed that somewhere so because there was always corn but basically the corn that we saw in the supermarkets was 
grown in people's private gardens. You know, I mean, they have a, you know, a, a quarter acre, uh, you know, garden for their family or whatever. Yeah. And uh, you can grow a lot of corn in that area and uh, more than any one family would use. And so they take that to the market and sell it and so on. Sure. That's kind of still the way it is in Japan. You right. Know, I, I think. Right. And right. Uh, I go to a, lo a few uh, vegetable shops here, small mm -hmm. mom and pop vegetable shops. And yep. I mean, they've got so much surplus, you know, you can buy a whole box of mini tomatoes for, for a dollar or, yep. right. They've got, yep. I've, I've gotten huge bags of uh, cucumbers, Japanese cucumbers for, for a dollar or two. Yep. It's amazing. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. There's a, there's a little mom and pop vegetable, fruit and vegetable shop right across the street from my, uh, my apartment where I live. And then I've noticed now, even in the supermarkets, they have the the local produce corners, right? You know, mm -hmm. they, um, you know, they, they've got the, the things that are packaged all real nice and so on that come, you know, trucked in from somewhere. Right. But then they also have, you know, the locally grown and, you know, uh, on the, on the little plastic bag that they probably bagged up there at the supermarket itself, they've got the name of the farmer, uh, who grew right. that particular crop, which that's I think great. is really nice to see. Right, right. I've seen that too. And that's wonderful, actually. Yes, yeah. uh, at a supermarket near my university on Tuesday, every Tuesday morning, uh, they've got a sale, vegetable sales, mm. right? And it's just the vegetables are so cheap. It's mm. amazing, right? Yeah. yeah. Mushrooms yeah. upon mushrooms for, for you know, bags for, for, for a dollar or two. Yeah. It's, yeah. And, you know, onions for 10 cents each, basically Juen or... Yep. junian each right or yep. a cucumber for junian of course right uh lately there's been a lot of rain so that affected it a bit oh but generally quite a bit, yeah. right quite yeah, a bit did, i'm right. sure yeah, yeah i mean the uh looking for things like broccoli um mm, uh, yeah. you know i mean you find uh a, a what a, a head of a head of broccoli a, a bunch of broccoli or whatever you the the terminology I think, is yeah right? i think it's head isn't it a head yeah. of broccoli, head, head, of broccoli. Maybe. head is uh, head is like the tree part right yeah, yeah i guess so but anyway whatever it is you know um you know they're like you know twice the price and they're they're half the size and twice the price of what you would typically find at this time of year simply because of the amount of rain we got Right. Uh, indeed. Indeed. That's right. And they're expensive, very expensive in some yeah. places. Yeah. yeah. So um, I know in American supermarkets, uh, mm -hmm. there's a lot of waste because people don't like to buy uh, blemished or or otherwise um, kind of uh, mutant vegetables, as it were. <laughs> right. 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 Misshapen or right. Oddly shaped or, you know, discolored. Right. Right. Uh, so a lot of, of these get thrown away. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess it's pretty much the same way in Japan still. Uh, I, would, I, yeah, I would say it's probably even more so in Japan. I mean, in America, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I know, you know, they would they would have like carts of uh, you know, uh, dented can canned goods or whatever, or the labels are or are, are, if the labels are ripped, they don't do anything. But if the, if the can is dented still. You know, they would like put it in a in a cart, you know, and, and sell it for half price or whatever. In Japan, they just they don't even sell it. If the label is ripped, they might make it fifty. If the wow, can I, is still yeah. it's ripped, oh, you know, they're wow. <laughs> even more picky. I, I I guess they are. I actually saw a, a program on television about a, a woman who was trying to to make a, a company. Several uh, uh, people are doing this now. They they kind of make a business out of selling those. Uh, otherwise unworthy vegetables, right? Uh -huh. uh, so they take all the misshapen ones or the oddly colored ones and they uh, they resell them, which I think is great. Why not? I mean, my me, myself, and I, I don't really oh, worry about that. I'm, I'm not bothered by that. Are you you're still on? I you're lost. looking quite blurry over here. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, uh, oh, unstable. Unstable. I I am unstable. I mean that that's that's a You're accurate. Dan. Um, that's yes. an accurate observation there. Yes, I I'm been unstable for years now. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that means you're going to get even more unstable when you retire. Uh oh, watch out, world. That's right. No, yep. watch out, world. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. I mean, I don't mind buying. Uh, those misshapen ones, the kind of mutant vegetables, right? If you see a right. carrot that has like two ends to it or curves yeah. around or whatever, yeah. uh, or strange looking potatoes, I don't mind. Yeah. Of oh, course. but 
I, I can remember, I, I, I haven't heard or seen much of it lately, but I remember, you know, the first couple of years when I was in Niigata, there was a big stir about um, some guy found a, a carrot or so, or maybe it was a daikon that had mm -hmm. split at the bottom into two large trunks plus a tiny little trunk at you know nub of a trunk <laughs> at the at the, the the at the convergence point right <laughs> or, yeah and so that was that was like that was like a very popular vegetable you know? <laughs> okay yeah <laughs> I, think so. I guess i can imagine what it resembled <laughs> right. <laughs> right 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 yeah there yeah. are those yeah, yeah. Uh, like yeah sure 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 like <laughs> like a carrot the same deal with a right. carrot or tomatoes exactly. right exactly. i think tomatoes are especially prone to that yeah tomatoes come out in a lot of strange shapes Good, yeah. growing in strange shapes yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. my I, mother I, my mother always complains about the taste of the the fruit and vegetables now in in america really she says, okay yeah you know it, it's not the prices she complains about uh there the prices are you know maintain you know fairly reasonable prices but the she says so they just don't taste. taste like they used to wow uh, yeah. do expand on that i mean are they not as sweet or they're not as right, fresh they, right they you know they just they're they're bland it's you know i mean uh so what she noticed about uh tomatoes that you know they seem to be firmer you know they they don't uh soften up to the point that it, they become difficult to use you know they maintain their you know their their consistency for longer mm -hmm. but they taste like you know, they taste almost like nothing. Uh, you know, they're they're nice and firm. You know, you can slice them and so on, and and they look really nice, but uh, they they just don't have any flavor. They're you know, I mean, like eating cardboard or something. You know, it's just wow. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, it's not so cool. Now, not too far. Not uh, there there were more. Uh, uh, so the the Amish. There are Amish settlements uh, in Iowa, uh, scattered throughout Iowa, and the Pennsylvania Amish too. Pennsylvania right. too. Sure. Sure. Right. Yeah. yeah. That, that's what we call them. The Pennsylvania Dutch, you know? Right. 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 Indeed. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> exactly. Um, but, uh, you know, there, those settlements are scattered throughout Iowa also. And, uh, so my, my, my father, when he was alive, used to, uh, go quite often and, uh, bargain with them, you know, and buy, buy, uh, buy vegetables and even, uh, like the, uh, chickens and so on that, uh, so on, uh, from them, uh, because the quality was just so much better. The prices were about the same or a little bit cheaper, uh, but the quality was just infinitely better. So they always did wow. that. That's good. You know? Yeah. I, I have had some bland vegetables in Japan, like an, an unripe tomato or something, uh, uh, but then again, mostly I get very, very tasty vegetables here. Yeah. So that's, yeah, no I believe problems. so too. Yeah. 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 Right? The, uh, in fact, uh, spinach i never liked spinach while i lived in america and uh i mean you know i like it here uh you know i it's i good. really yeah, i really like spinach and tomatoes also uh I, I was never a tomato eater in america but now i eat tomatoes um you know so yeah i i think if anything you know vegetables have a better taste in japan than they do in america yeah my i think so too my mother's uh, testimony seems to be evidence of that also so yeah. Right. Sure. Absolutely. Uh, and I'm one for fresh food too. I, I very rarely eat like frozen vegetables and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Uh, I know they're not bad probably. Right. And, right. but I'm one not to buy like frozen broccoli or frozen peas and right. stuff. We I'd rarely rather eat too. We yeah. Rarely do. Rather eat fresh. Right. But and I mean, if you can get it. Yeah. But, uh, you know, frozen is still, you know, a major step up from canned. You know. Oh yes, yes, uh, right. And that, indeed, that's the thing indeed. that that that's the thing that really struck me most. I think about, uh, the first time I walked into a Japanese supermarket is mm -hmm. the sparsity of canned goods. Yeah, no, you're you absolutely know, I mean, right. There are just a few. I mean, uh, things you know, like uh, canned tomatoes that are imported from Italy or something like that. You know, the tomato sauce in cans or something like that. But I mean, there mm -hmm, are mm -hmm. there are just a small handful of items that are likely to be in actual tins or in cans, right? Um, You're right. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen canned peas or canned, uh, you know, canned corn in Japan. Uh, you I know, have, as they would have in in America. I have, have seen have canned you? corn, okay. but again, it was imported, right? You know, it was very, oh, right. very okay. cheap. You know, and so it was imported from somewhere from Thailand or something like that, right? You know, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. so things like pineapple are often found in cans. You know, uh, mm -hmm, probably mm -hmm. these things that are imported is probably safer. Uh, you can probably do a, a bigger bulk shipment in cans rather than if they would put them in glass jars and so on. Right. Um, and they last a long time. Right. You know, right. being in, in cans. But yeah, right. And 
uh, more shipping proof in, in cans rather than bottles. Yeah, sure. Right. Or jars, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Tuna. I guess tuna, 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 right. okay. tuna is the one common thing that Japanese might buy that's actually in cans. But uh, yeah, yeah, sure. The, the sizes are much different, aren't they? Oh, yes. The, the size of, of J Japanese canned tuna is like very, very small. Right. Yeah. And and almost as expensive, I guess. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, so uh, when I go to Costco, I buy the canned tuna and the canned chicken. Ah, yes. Yes. Right. Absolutely. Uh, which isn't bad. It's really yeah. not bad, actually, yeah. in a yeah. pinch. And, yeah. And you can keep it for a while. So that's right. So it's all good. But generally, right, you know, I like the old. Uh, the fresh vegetables. Hi, Edward. How you doing? Good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. Uh, so th that's one realm of small business. Yeah, of course, right? The, the mm -hmm. farms and supermarkets. And uh, of course, in Japan, there's still a lot of uh, small businesses. Of course, now mm -hmm. with the pandemic, it's a bit tricky. Right. Uh, so, but I, yeah, I was in also just briefly, I was in also the other week, right? And uh, there are a lot of small uh, mom and pop, for example, soba or ramen shops up there or udon shops, yeah, that are all open now, basically. Uh huh. Okay. Even cool. with the variant and the, yeah, the, mm. the, the COVID and whatnot, it's, it's a little bit scary, but yep. I'm happy to see they're doing business, you know. So what is it? Is this, is this the Greek uh, coronavirus now? I mean, we've got alpha, beta, delta, <laughs> gamma, yeah. lambda, mu. I mean. <laughs> I know. Yeah, right. Lambda, mu. I guess that's what they're doing. They're maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe yeah, it's the sorority, alpha, the sorority, corona sorority <laughs> virus. Corona or sorority <laughs> or, yeah, fraternity, right? Fraternity yeah, virus, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. I guess that's what they're doing. And I haven't heard much about the mu. Speaking right. of it, it's right. it's just brand new, and uh, yeah, but I guess it's, prevalence is thirty nine percent of the cases in Colombia. They said right, okay, right, the Colombia thirty nine percent, thirty nine percent. Wow, yeah, yeah. So, so do you know anything about it? Is it is it more uh, contagious, or how does that work? Is it uh, I mean, deadlier, it, or I would, I mean, uh, I haven't heard actual solid numbers, but the fact that it's reached 39% must mean that it is at least very competitive with the Delta variant. I mean, if because if it wasn't, uh, you know, close to or more transmissible than the Delta va variant, it wouldn't really have a chance to get a, a foothold. And the mm -hmm. fact that it has 39% in one population seems to indicate that, yeah, it's uh, it's got to be pretty contagious. Now, whether it's more deadly and so on. I haven't heard anything about that, but uh, yeah. I haven't either, but yeah, that's that's scary enough, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Gosh, all right. Well, we just so have what's to- what's going on with Edward? Yeah, Ed Edward says, it's the best day of my life. Thanks for the shout out. Exactly, great, Edward. Nice to hear that. I'm happy it's the best day of your life. Yeah, wonder what's going yeah, on. Yeah, great, yeah. great to hear that. You want to expand on that? Yeah. Or, uh, but it's, well, while we're waiting for, to learn yeah. more about that, you you said so you've had uh, two businesses uh, here in Japan. Where did you yeah. uh, do uh, you know involved in any businesses of your own businesses in America? Do you have any comparison? Good question. There? No, no, oh, okay. never, never any oh. small business. I've often thought about it and wanted to do several, but I just never got the opportunity, and came to Japan first, right before. You never even had a, a lemonade stand. You know, yeah, like a that. lemonade stand. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so you there. You've got the entrepreneurial that's, that's spirit, true. right? Yeah. yeah, lemonade stands, cookie stand. I think we had, and there you, know. you go. Yeah, uh, yeah. I guess that's really basically about it. Yeah. Uh, I, I was a bartender in the in the college bar for a little okay. while during during frat parties and whatnot, yeah. and drank up all the profits things like right? that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was my yeah. introduction to bar life pretty much yeah. i guess okay there you yeah. go <laughs> my my parents were uh were small business owners they uh uh great they they had a bait and tackle shop on the mississippi river really i never yeah. knew that yeah. okay uh, you know, Never a little, that. Good. little town of Guttenberg, right? Not Gutenberg, but Guttenberg. Guttenberg. If you're from Iowa, you got to pronounce it correctly. It's Guttenberg. It's Guttenberg. Right? <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay. Are so, there two T's in it? Uh, or just, or is it G U T T or G U T? Or I mean, not that it matters, but G U T G U T T, I believe. Yeah, two T's, I believe. Yeah, Guttenberg. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, it's been so long, I forgot. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, um, 
Yeah. Uh, so yeah, they, you know, I mean, it was, you know, it was quite a nice business, you know, they were just, you know, about a hundred meters off of the Mississippi river itself, you know, and they, you know, they, um, initially bought the business and then they ended up uh, building a home next to the business so that it would be more convenient to them, you know, and uh, yeah, they made a go of it for, for many years, for many that's years. That's great. Okay. That's, that's cool. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. yeah. I like small businesses like that mom and mm. pop businesses. Yeah. My friends had had businesses. My friend's parents, one friend of mine in New York uh, had a, his parents had a, a supermarket and he had a CD shop mm. Uh we were thinking about joining up and doing something like that, mm -hmm. uh, but never again, never got the opportunity. Mm. Uh, my uncle, my mom's brother, uh, worked for both uh, Pepsi and Coke. Oh, actually, right. Both companies. He was a chemist. A double agent. He was a double agent. I think he went from Pepsi to Coke, right? Oh, I see. Oh, I a turncoat. Oh, my I God. I think he was a turncoat, but he defector. had to, he was a defector, one of the two. I'm not sure exactly what happened there, but I think he, he had to promise not to divulge secrets. Uh, yeah. I guess, yeah. But he had a, uh, uh, he and my aunt had a, uh, a small, um, uh, uh, like a, a convenience store, right, in Michigan. Mm -hmm. uh, and the store got so busy during summers that he actually quit his job at coke wow much to my mom and dad's chagrin actually right hmm. uh, but uh, he quit to work for the uh the convenience store right and then he he opened a, he started a level company you know the level construction levels right right yeah. with the the little yeah, uh, the yeah little right. bean in there, right? Yeah, he wanted to do a level company. Interestingly, right? A level company. Okay. A level company. So that, yeah, he did the level company, and right. uh, I guess my... somebody has to make them. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah right. So yeah. He wanted to make these kind of ornate uh, wooden levels, very beautifully <laughs> done. He was a, okay. a, he did a lot of woodcraft as a hobby and wanted to do it, do get into it that way. All right. Uh, I think my dad supported him in that. Mm hmm uh and uh that didn't do so well <laughs> oh <laughs> right okay oh, that's yeah. too bad. it it started out okay but then it it actually didn't do so well and another hobby he had was making knives mm. uh, yeah he was a knife maker so okay. he really started to to go strongly on that uh, okay. he, he started to make a lot of knives started making a name for himself hmm. he went to knife shows and sold quite a few knives uh, one of them, I guess, was almost in an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. Oh, they liked the style, and uh, in the end, I guess it didn't work out. But huh. he sold a lot of knives and went to a lot of knife shows. Yeah, interesting. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, he died uh, at my age, and this was about 30 years ago, I guess. Now, uh -huh. yeah, he died unfortunately of a heart attack. Wow, at, at, at 58. 58. Wow. Not that I wanted to disclose my age, but yeah, just showing how, <laughs> how young he was. Right. Which right. was very, it's a shame. Yeah. And yeah. some of his knives are still around, I, I suppose. Mm -hmm. But yeah, he was an interesting guy. Yeah. Uh, again, that's as close to I came uh, to doing a business over there. Right. Yeah. I was more into music, so I kind of wanted to do a recording studio, actually. Mm -hmm. Uh and and, and re recording and rehearsal studio in America. Mm -hmm. uh, and my dad and I started to take a look at some of the prices of the recording equipment in those days, just extremely expensive. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's one thing that, that, uh, that stopped us from doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That was uh, quite a yeah. barrier to, to entry there. Yeah. Yeah. My grandfather, my dad's father actually had one of the first car dealerships in America. Oh. Did wow. I ever tell you this story? No, yeah. yeah. Uh, and he's from the Illinois area, and he actually knew Henry Ford. Okay. Was and uh, was uh, given the chance to have one of the first Ford dealerships in the 19 teens and early 20s. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, but that's when it was luxurious and very you know honorable to have a car dealership. Uh, I don't know if it looks that way nowadays. You know. The Talking about yes. Ford, the early Fords. If I remember right, I saw somewhere on some probably some social media something that Henry Ford actually built the a a car that basically made out of hemp. Interesting. Wow. Yeah. Okay. You know, so it, it was you know, totally you know. So even you know the renewable resources. You know they're uh, you know thinking about that even back then. But 
it just didn't I, I guess it didn't have the appeal or whatever and and so it never came it really came to fruition but uh yeah that was something that i i uh, heard that he had played around with so yeah that's Henry amazing Ford. okay yeah yeah hemp Ford. car yeah i mean hemp yeah you break down somewhere <laughs> while you're waiting for the wrecking crew or we're <laughs> waiting for the, the record to come and tow you away you know you can you won't be bored. A, that's right. You pull off a fender and just, you know. <laughs> pull off a fender and, just, and you know. take out your rolling papers and there that's you go. Right. There I you guess, go. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So my my grandfather had that. And I think that those, uh, my, my grandfather and uncle, they, they were quite, quite uh, the uh, harbingers to, I guess, my interest in business. Because mm -hmm. I, I wanted to do businesses for a long time in America and just never got the opportunity, but here I did. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Yeah. yeah. So, it, it's, yeah. you know, it's great. I mean, so you've had a couple of successful businesses. I know so many, especially the, you know, the, uh, you know, the, the bars, the, the snack clubs or the, the bars and, and drinking establishment here. So many people start and after, you know, a, you know, a year or even a few months, they end up closing the doors. It's really hard to get started. You know, you really have to have a large uh, base of, of, of uh, you know, of clients that yeah. are, you know, repeat clients, you know. Um, very, very true. And it's very difficult, right? Yeah. At first, when I first started the bar, you know, I promoted it and told friends and stuff. And then uh, it wasn't until six months later. I mean, you know, we were we were kind of like, gosh, you know, how are we going to do this? But, you know, fortunately, somehow we paid rent those first few months. Yeah, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, it was expensive, too. It was, mm -hmm. you know, a couple of thousand dollars a month. Right. Right. Uh, for the spot, which wasn't very big. And, and we were kind of going through uh, uh, and they used to do this in Japan. They used to uh, building or I guess people interested in doing businesses would would rent the space from the building owner and then re-rent it or sublease it hmm. to those mm -hmm. interested in, in doing bars and whatnot, right? So they kind right. of made money on top of of, <laughs> of the cost of the bar, right? So right. this is illegal in America. Right. Yeah, you can't right. do that. Right. I think it's illegal now in Japan. Oh, okay. Yeah, but I knew that, right? And I was like, oh my gosh, why are we paying this much? Why can't I rent directly from the, the building owner, right? Right. Well, eventually we were able to do that. The, okay. the bar next to us w w kind of, you know, went out of business and mm -hmm. they couldn't re-rent it. And we used that bar as overflow, mm -hmm. right? For when our bar got so busy, right? And we used it as overflow. We paid the building owner some extra money for that. And then eventually I asked the, the middleman, dude mm. right to mm. is it okay if you vacate and we can just take because we wanted to get the building the bar next door right right which we ended up being able to do so we cool. blew through the walls and expanded and at that point i was like i'd like to rent directly from the building owner if, if right. possible so uh can you skedaddle you know and <laughs> he said sure give me a little bit of cash and, and i'll get out of here so we did that okay yeah <laughs> we made yeah. the deal so yeah uh, cool. But yeah, so we, we were able to do that. But, uh, you know, the first six months were touch and go. I mean, it was it was, you know, kind of hard to get your name out there and get people, you know, recognizing it and, and mm -hmm. coming. Like you said, you know, you need a, a steady uh, flow of clientele. Mm -hmm. uh, one great friend of mine, you know, started to bring in his uh, uh, his teaching buddies right wow. after on Friday nights okay. after finishing work. Mm -hmm. They kind of adopted uh, the bar as kind of like their go-to place, right? They would go out and have dinner mm -hmm. together and come to the bar every Friday. Ah, uh, and then from there it started to get really good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. That's you know that's the thing. I mean, most of the people that I knew that started businesses were Japanese friends of mine. Uh, one couple that I knew particularly well, I I got to know them as uh, members of a Macintosh users group here in Kumamoto. And, right. uh, yeah. and, uh, you know, they, you know, they were big into Macintosh and they were doing all kinds of things. They were like scanning slides, uh, from hospitals. Hospitals had all the, uh, you know, huge numbers of slides of, you know, from operations or whatever that they wanted to, to, to catalog and, and, and into a, a computer database and so on. So they did work Excellent. like that and so on. But anyway, they, but they got into, uh, you know, uh, a, a bar also. And, okay. Uh, 
they had they had a little live music corner and everything you know and and uh, they were trying to set it up you know so to appeal to people who are interested in listening to music but also um you know they they had uh, bartenders that were uh generally foreigners or japanese that spoke english very well they're trying to promote the the international aspect of it and so on and there was yeah, a group cool. of about a dozen people that uh you know that uh, invested in it together and i think Excellent. that lasted i think that lasted for about you know 12 to 14 months and then they closed the doors oh shoot that's yeah. that's too bad that's too yeah. bad hey candy how you doing thanks for joining us yeah awesome great yeah that's really too bad if you can't make a go of it you know yeah. Yeah. Uh, that was, you know, the goal was to do everything possible to, to, to make a go of it and to, to keep it going, you know, and we had a lot of, we were very lucky. Of course, we had a lot of people come in we tried to do various events and stuff. And mm -hmm. eventually we got a, uh, a dart machine, right. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, after the expansion, we had DJ events and, and open mics and stuff like that. So it was mm -hmm. really good. We were kind yeah. of the go-to bar for the, um, the company Nova. Oh, the English okay. teaching school, Nova, when mm -hmm. they were here, right? And and they they were really kind to us. So we really mm -hmm. appreciate those guys. Cool. Uh, for sure, for sure. You know, unfortunately, I think it was 2008, the company went out of business, right? Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Remember yeah. that? Yeah. So, yeah. So uh, people started vacating <laughs> Komodo, right? Because right? yeah. English teachers, they didn't have a job. They were sponsored with their visas, their working visa to live in Japan through, through right. the company, right? Yeah. So they had no choice but to leave. A few people stuck it out. Yeah. And they're still here. Yeah. But yeah, Nova, yeah, the, the demise yeah. of Nova was Nova. a major candy. Kerfuffle. Candy <laughs> remembers Nova. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> That's an old school, totally. Yeah. 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 That was. Uh, that was ages ago, right? And so again, ages you know, ago. it we, seems just like yesterday. I mean, I've been here so long. Yeah, <laughs> I know, me too, right? Yeah. yeah, how long ago was that? Now, geez, I mean, that was so Nova. Was 14, uh, Nova went you know, twelve years Nova, ago, right? Nova disappeared uh, in my like eighteenth year here in Kumamoto. I'd already right, been here okay. eighteen years before they disappeared. You know, so wow, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. I think it was nine nine years that we had been doing the bar. Okay. So that was, yeah, we started in 1999. So yeah, 2018. Okay. Yeah, like nine years, right? Yeah. Uh, already yeah. it was nine years, right? And mm -hmm. and four years after we expanded mm -hmm. into the next bar. Well, and then in a way you yeah. were very fortunate that, you know, you had the good very, nine years to develop your clientele, you know, expand on that, you know, so that it, it wasn't, you know, yeah. just Nova, you know, if it would have happened, you know, probably, you know, six or seven years earlier, uh, that might have been a really big hit to your business, but uh, you were able to expand beyond that particular niche group there and, and really make a go of it. Yeah, you're absolutely right. We were very fortunate, very lucky to, yeah. to be able to do that, right? Yeah. Uh, with key people, you know, helping us out working at the bar and whatnot. And uh, mm -hmm. so that was really uh, a, a great time. S super awesome time in my life. Yeah. Mm. And it was just, just people were coming in. I met so many people and it was just, you know, a plethora of clientele and mm -hmm. yeah. And then 2009 was tough because we had that drop in, in clientele, right? The drop right. in customers, you know, after right. Nova, right. But, you know, we, people started coming back and then we got really popular with, with Japanese uh, mm -hmm. uh, customers and whatnot and mm -hmm. college students. It was mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. It was good. It started to pick back up. Yeah, actually, yeah. yeah. Yeah, talking about college students and bars, I remember when I first came to Kumamoto, um, it was very common. I mean, you know, the drinking age in Japan has been 20 for as long as I can. Uh, you know, age of, of uh, majority, you know, the adults officially could smoke and drink. Yes. And so on, right? Right. It's almost uh, in Japan at, at that time, it's, uh, if you were, if you were a university student and you went out drinking with your circle, that they, that, I mean, basically, I've never seen anybody carded, you know, ask for an ID in Japan. You know, it's like it's on the honor system. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so if right, you're yeah. if your professor or your, you know, the you're with a bunch of upperclassmen, you know, in a, in a in a uh, college uh, circle club or whatever, and you go to a bar, 
they're basically never going to ask you for identification. So very different mm -hmm. from, from America. So very different. And it is the honor system, like you said, you know, yeah. sure. And, you know, we were, we were playing that honor system uh, game too. And then, uh, I mean, if someone appeared to be really young, in, you know, in appearance, we would ask, ask for ID actually, right? Uh -huh. uh, we tried to make sure that people weren't driving too, because that's a big one in Japan, right? Drinking and driving right. is a big no-no, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 there is no alcohol limit for driving, right? It's right. 0, 0 0.00, right? That's so, right, yeah. Uh, so we tried to make sure that no one was drinking too. But mm -hmm. we had a couple instances, you know, we had to ask for ID, and right, and sure enough, really? a couple of people, yeah, because the people just obviously were, were really young, yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, a couple of them we asked that weren't young, that just looked young, but mm -hmm. you know they had ID, so they mm -hmm. were fine. But yeah, I, mm -hmm. my one of uh, my ex bar experience. Uh, I mean, I worked just a tiny little bit as a bartender. Um, basically, when it wasn't too busy, uh, I got to to tend bar just a little bit. But most of the time, I spent on the door, you know, checking IDs that okay. people came in, you know, and I was told, you know, I mean basically just card everybody, you know, just like, you know, and so some woman, she had to be, you know, like 45 comes in, you know, and I said, can I see your ID? And she was just so flattered. Oh, you really want to see my ID? Oh, yeah. thank you. <laughs> I know. Yeah, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah you have to card everybody. I know. It's, yeah. Interestingly so, right? Yeah. yeah. And uh, so, which is, is, is a good thing, but yeah, it's yeah. flattering to some people, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, I guess you and I wouldn't get carded now, would we? <laughs> probably not. Probably <laughs> not. Yeah. Oh, well, they've got gray hair. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, but, you know, yeah. I, yeah, I, I, you know, talking about aging and so on, I go to the Philippines and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm amazed so far. I'm still Kuya. They haven't started calling me Lolo yet. You know, uh, Lolo is, is grandfather, you know, uh, it's kind of like Oji san, right. You know, um, okay. As yeah. uh, where where Kuya Japan, is like uh, like uh, yeah Ojisan right is like oh, you know it's like uncle like you know? uncle okay right yeah so they still they still call me Kuya they still call me uncle uh, I remember uh, a couple of our a couple of our buddies that uh, we uh, we did the uh, the teachers helping teachers things there I remember one of them you know said that he was really crushed the first time that uh, one of the one of the bar girls came up to him and said oh uh, lolo something 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 hey, you know he's like oh no all right, <laughs> yeah, right. i'm lolo now yeah. it's uh -huh. like in japan being called jichan you know right, yeah. hey jichan <laughs> jichan yeah can you get you see jichan oh <laughs> 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 yeah, that's, I, that's... I've been called G Chan for, as a joke from people, but, yeah. but I'm I'm sure from students, you know, I'm, I'm pretty mm -hmm. I'm pretty G Chan ish. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Right, yeah, I mean, it's amazing. You know, when when I came here, when I started teaching at Tokai, I was 30 years old. You know, so I mean, I you know the so I was still you know like 12 years older, but I mean, I was probably closer to the students' age than I were to their parents' age, right? But now. Gotcha. But now at 61, I mean, I could be, you know, like grandparent, uh, you know, age area, you know, I mean, yeah. really, you know. Um, yeah, you're older than some of their parents now. Me oh, too. I'm older yeah. than most of their yeah. parents, almost yeah, all I of their so. parents. I guess so, right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. Uh, like I said, I'm closing in on their grandparents' age now here. You yeah, know? <laughs> right, 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 yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, you know, interesting. I always taught, even though I had the bar in the school, I always taught English as mm -hmm. an adjunct professor mm -hmm. at universities, just because I love teaching. Mm -hmm. uh, and I had an experience maybe about five, four or five years ago when a student said, uh, oh, you know, you, by the way, you know, you were my mom's teacher <laughs> when she went to, when she came to university, right? And I, uh, it was one of those moments like, oh, oh okay. I'm oh old. no, right. Yeah, I'm old, I'm right. Old. Yeah. yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm sure yeah. it's happened before, uh, you know, after that too. Right, yeah, yeah. The um, students just don't tell you, but right. Right. So I started saying recently, you know, like maybe I taught some of your parents, Hey, ask your mom and dad, you know, right. if, if I, if I taught them, right. You know? <laughs> Cause uh, then you're, you're, you're over the shock. Right. Yeah. You know, I'm over the shock now. Yeah. Well, I remember, like, right. yeah, I mean, I remember, you know, uh, 
so the the first year you know the 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 girls at the at tokai here i mean because the the majors mostly appeal to to young men right uh you know uh i mean they've they've done something to improve that but predominantly at this at this campus it was it was a male dominated uh student population so the girls mm -hmm. kind of stood out right and uh you know, so, you know, I, I basically remembered the girls and then I was at a, I was at a bar this, you know, like this is, I'd been in Japan probably for about, you know, 15, 17 years, something like that. Right. And, uh, I was in a bar and I looked over and I, I saw a girl, she looked like she was in her mid thirties or something like that, you know, and, and, uh, she looked familiar, but I couldn't place her at all. And so I went over and I talked to her and I said, uh, you know, do you know me? Do we know each other at all? And she said, well, I don't know, you know, she, cause she didn't recognize me. It's been, you know, like I said, 15, you know, 17 years or whatever. And we got wow. to talking and uh, she was uh, a student of mine, like one of my, the first year or two that I was at Tokai, you know, and so 15, 17 years <laughs> have gone by. So there she is <laughs> right. in her mid thirties, you know, now. So <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah. 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 I had a couple experiences like that before I started the bar. I was a, an ALT, an assistant language teacher mm -hmm. here at a school in uh, Kumamoto. Right. And mm -hmm. I knew a lot of students then, which kind of got me into teaching. I love that experience. Right. So I was there for three years. I got to be good friends with the teachers and students. And I went back to the States, got my master's and in linguistics and came back and started to teach and open the bar and whatnot. And some students from, uh, from the high school days started coming to the bar, mm -hmm. which was, which was great. Right. Like cool. not too cool. far after they graduated, started coming to the bar. Right. And right. one guy still comes, believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah. I, I was there. When was it? I was there in October, I guess, or November. Uh huh. Or even after that, no January, I guess it was. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, yeah, he, I said, he was there that night and I saw him and, and, you know, we talked to another customer and he was like, you know, he was like, well, you know, yeah, you taught me when I was a high school student. Right. And I actually joined the karate club mm. and he was a karate member. And cool. so he, he always brings that up. So, uh, uh. so that, that was really fun. I've since of course sold the bar and, and sold the business, you know, sold the <laughs> bar and the, and the the company to the pass it on to the next person, you know, Takumi, if you're mm -hmm. watching Takumi, all right. How you doing? Here's a shout out to you. So uh, of you course sold, it's closed you now. The, you sold huh? the umbrella company or sold the umbrella sell? company oh, too. Okay. I, I couldn't because, because of my job now I couldn't be the CEO. Right. And that happens. It's quite common, you know, mm -hmm. to, to do, to go into, you know, so an associate professorship, you, you know, you can't, you can't do both. Right, right, which is fine, right? I was kind of, you know, thinking about retiring anyway, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but passed it on, so sold everything, right? Mm. Sold the, uh, the uh, primarily the bar and the and the uh, overlying company, yeah, the mm -hmm. umbrella company, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and got out of it completely. But it's 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 great. It's yeah. it's, it's nice. I'm on to the next stage, and you know, uh, the next owner's on to his next stage in life. So great cool. i've got have so many great memories and so many great people are doing other bars and other entities now yeah. which is awesome yeah. so what about you your know, language school that one i i closed actually yeah mm -hmm. i got too busy here at the school i kept it for a while while i had the school but it was mm -hmm. it was too much actually to maintain right, right. You did, I, made, yeah why I didn't you sell it. that off i would think that there would be people in town that would have been interested yeah i think it was a bad location and uh. it's just it's just the 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 uh the the school itself the physical school was kind of run down in a rundown building mm. it was but, it was but you had a you had a structure you had a quorum you had a you had a group of of uh, students you know we had some we had some students yeah i mean several i did pass several of them on to the, mm. the some friends and mm -hmm. stuff and mm -hmm. yeah i just decided you know not to maintain that one right i, I right. think i probably should have tried to sell it actually now that i think about it but yeah i mean i you know what uh, you know establishing you know uh, a base of students you know is uh, i mean that's you know the first hurdle for any you know new school to overcome you know um i mean that's that's more of a challenge than even uh, the location and so on, you know. Um, yeah, I was lucky to have to still have students after, right. after that so many years and yeah. whatnot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I should have sold it to you or someone else. Actually, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I so would, that I, that is uh, that is one thing. Yeah, yeah. Getting yeah. those students. How would you have continued on that? Or, I, I mean. I, 
I would have been, I, I would have so? been interested, but then again, uh, you know, once I, you know, got tenured here at Tokai, I would have probably had, for the same reasons had to give it up, you know, just being too busy, you know, to, yeah. to do it. And so. I think, well, that too, that too. Yeah. I couldn't, couldn't have, uh, done it anyway myself. So it's, right. yeah, it's, I think it, I was looking at selling it there and it got too, you know, too, too, too busy and time consuming to try to find someone to buy it. And, mm. Um, yeah. Did you ever think about just like, you know, contracting teachers? I mean, you could give them, you know, like, you know, like 90% of the, you know, you know, I mean, you know, give them a major cut so that they're very happy to do that, but then you at least keep the school and then, you know, it's under your name. So then as you retire, you still want to, you know, a side business or something, you know, when you're past 65 or whatever, you know, your retirement age, you got that already, you know, going. Yeah. Yeah. I, I could have done that. I, I guess I should have probably done that, but mm -hmm. yeah. Again, it was kind of just too time consuming. Right. Yeah. yeah, d yeah. Didn't want to kind of try to maintain it, you know. Yeah. I mean, it, it might have been problematic to, you know, having teachers who quit or what have you or True. wanting to move on and trying having to try to find a new a new teacher yeah. yet again, you know. So, yeah. So yeah. I didn't continue with that, you know, although, um, <clears throat> you know, there's always retirement. Mm -hmm. uh, and Dan, you're retiring here. Yep. So, Very too. Soon. Did you ever consider doing some kind of small business after retirement i i've thought about it a lot but um you know i you know i finding a location you know and uh you know and, and just you know getting started uh you know i mean i i've been here long enough that i've got you know a lot of connections in town you know both you know among you know uh, other uh, english teachers and also just people in the community and so on but uh yeah it's a little bit daunting um and I'm, I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm basically a teacher, you know, I mean, I, I, you know, I'm interested in dabbling in business, but, uh, you know, uh, or, you know, and yeah, that's the thing about a, a language school. Uh, yeah. it's, it's as much, you know, you're, you're as much a businessman as you are a teacher. And I'm not sure that, I mean, I feel okay about being a teacher. I'm not sure how good I am at being a businessman. So. Yes, there's a lot of things you have to think about, right? You have to think about, of course, paying rent and, you know, the infrastructure, getting phones and internet connection and whatnot and, right. and maintaining the student, you know, the student level because you'll have times when students will quit, right. will move on. And it's right. just a fact of the business, you know. Yep. Uh, I admire people doing language schools now because I know mm. it's tough. I mean, uh, you know, when I first came to Japan, it was probably quite easy Mm -hmm. uh to to get a lot of students and to to even teach privately which mm -hmm. i did back in the day too mm -hmm. i taught a lot privately right in my mm -hmm. house and right and and at students homes and whatnot mm -hmm. that was quite lucrative mm -hmm. and it was quite easy then but i think it's gotten a bit harder now no yeah. Yeah, yeah, I used I used mm -hmm. to do quite a few, you know, private lessons. I had a group of doctors in Tamana where I was living at the time and I taught them for a while and then as my daughter was growing up, I started teaching some of the neighborhood kids and bringing my daughter with me so that she'd uh have an excuse That's to, cool. to study English a little bit, you know, and so on. Um yeah, but, great, uh, great. Yeah, but, but I never really ex expanded it into uh, an established school or anything. It was always just spot lessons here and there. You know, they might continue for several years, but uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's good. At my school, I, I had uh, students I still keep in touch with. In fact, one of them is my dentist now. Oh. <laughs> he, was my, he was my student for a while. So we kind of, you know, traded off kind of services, right? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. Oh, well, you know. talk about, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's it's really good, you know, the kind of people that you meet, you know, that are interested in studying English for whatever reasons. Uh so I've got I've got uh, a former student on the police force here in Kumamoto. That's good. Yeah. Hopefully that I never have to call in that, you know, <laughs> that favor, you know. But, uh, yeah, seriously. It's good, totally. good to know yeah. somebody there, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really good, really good. Yep. So you uh, mentioned, and this was, I think, pre-pandemic. You uh -huh. you saw a little uh, a little store, a little kind of vacant shop that mm -hmm. was near your apartment uh -huh. that you kind of expressed interest in, like doing a restaurant or bar in. Right. Yeah. Uh, remember that? Yes. Yes. I still <laughs> we think that would be good. Yeah. That shop would have been good i think yeah yep. actually yeah, the location so was really quite good because it was kind of triangulated between three universities you know and we both have connection at all three of those universities so 
It yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Yeah. That could have been good. Yeah, it's uh it got taken over by something. What is it now? I just passed it this morning. It's it's, it's some kind of, the, kind of kind of the I I think it's like home health care of some type. You know, rather those are like home helper types or you know the, the nursing, you know, services or something like that. Uh, right, people, right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so it's, like, it's like, that that kind of a thing. It's somehow related to healthcare and and home nursing and and so on. Yeah, I see. I see. It's got a kind of a strange name, doesn't right. it? Right. Yeah, Kurt I can't two remember. or something. Yeah. S was it C U R T O or something? Yeah, Kurt. Kurt, Kurt it, yeah, Kurto. Kurto or something like that. Kurto yeah. or something like that. Yeah, yeah I couldn't figure yeah. that out. But I, that I, location would have been great. You're right. Yep. yep. A couple of people mentioned that to me actually uh, back when I was doing it is to open up one near uh, Kumamoto University. Mm -hmm. Like, cause that's a, another major university here in Kumamoto, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they, they do have some small restaurants and mom and pop shops around mm -hmm. them. You know mm -hmm. that area, right? Right, right, yeah. Yeah, you remember, I, you never were a darts player much, were you? Um, no, I was, I started right. getting into it from you, basically. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Joe and I used to go, and there was a little place just over that. Uh, what is that small bridge there? Uh, not not oh. the main bridge, the small bridge. Was that um, Ozekibashi, right? Yeah, Ozekibashi. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, Ozekibashi, right? Yeah. So was, at the yeah. on the the uh, the Kumoto Dai side of of the bridge there, da, right beside at the ah. end of the bridge, there was a little taco. I think a takoyaki stand, right? A takoyaki I remember that shop. And upstairs that. from that was where there was a, a darts bar. I remember that. I remember that. Right, yes. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Yep. Sure. Sure. I played there, there a couple the time. times with you guys. Yeah, we used to go there all yeah. the time, and uh, you know, and the woman that we knew that was running it uh, decided she wanted to give it up. I think she moved to Hiroshima or something like that. She had something else going on, and uh, I was seriously thinking about taking that over because I was really into darts at the time, you know. And I thought, you know, I I was I was teaching at, at Kumadai also at the time. Uh, Kumamoto uh, University at the time and so I had you know the the connection with the students some students there anyway you know and uh, so I thought that that would really be uh, something to to make a go of you know but cool um, yeah unfortunately what I what I discovered spending there it's so whatever the the insulation in that uh, in that uh, the second floor of that building was just terrible it was extremely hot and they they tried to rectify it a couple of different ways and even with air conditioners blowing all the time, um, you know, it was just, it was just ridiculously hot, you know, wow. it, you know, so, okay. cause I wanted to, I wanted to do something. I was thinking of, of doing a lunch from the afternoon, uh, you know, uh, you know, getting the students to come over for the afternoon, you know, they finish their classes or whatever they could, you know, have lunch, stick around, play, throw some darts or whatever, and then continue it on into a, a darts bar in the evening, you know, so darts oh, lunch man. in the afternoon, darts bar in the evening, but the afternoon just wasn't going to work low battery oh so uh -oh. there there goes yeah. your there goes your <laughs> give yeah. me a sec give yeah. me a sec okay but uh, uh i think i can give some get some extra power going here so yeah so this me, right yeah yeah we still hear you yeah um so you know this you know it seemed like a, a great location you know because it was close to the university and uh you know i it was a known you know everything was known and so on um it would have been it would have been a good opportunity except you know like i said uh, the uh, you know the heat profile of that place you know the uh, it was just unbearable it was an oven uh, in the early afternoon you know uh, and uh, that just made it just made it unusable for a lunch a lunch venue at all uh, it just wasn't going to work um, and you know I was of the opinion you know, I mean there I knew a lot of darts bars that were going on and they were they were doing okay you know uh, but nobody was making a lot of money at all. Uh, and not that I, you know, not that that was a big, uh, a big deal, but I did want to make a, a decent living. But, uh, you know, I thought, you know, the, the problem with a lot of bars, as I saw it, was that you're only getting income for a few hours every day, you know, so the, basically the bar doesn't get busy until, you know, like eight o'clock at night, you know, so from eight o'clock until one or two o'clock in the morning is the only time that you're really going to get uh, much business. And I thought, why limit yourself like that? If you if you have a lunch business, you open up at eleven o'clock in the morning. Then you go from eleven o'clock in the morning until two o'clock in the morning. Uh, get a stream of income going. You know, basically all during you know the day. 
Um, I yeah. thought that was the only way to do it. Um, and since I couldn't do the, the, you know, the, the lunchtime, I just talked myself out of it. Oh yeah. 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 That's too bad. Yeah. Probably okay. a good thing. I mean, I, I'm sure I would have gone out, you know, with uh, this uh, coronavirus would have definitely put me out if I hadn't, if I hadn't failed by this time, that would have definitely put me out of business, I think. Yeah. Yeah. That's one thing. That's one hard thing now. Right. Yeah. Isn't it? The, yeah. the coronavirus. I mean, yeah, for sure. You know, Joe, uh, my friend, you know, and I, that, uh, you know, good darts playing buddy of mine, we always used to go to uh, one of those uh, internet cafes where they had uh, a number of darts machines in there because it was so much cheaper than the darts bars and uh, we could play in the afternoon. Uh, so we finish up our classes in the morning and then early in the afternoon, we can go and play darts for a couple hours before we go back to the office or whatever, go home and so on. Uh, and, you know, places, internet cafes, all over Kumamoto, at least, are out of business because of COVID. Right? Um, the the first first six or six months or so, they you know they were you know trying to write it out and see if you know they could they could do something. But now, um, yeah, uh, these uh, these internet cafes have basically all disappeared. That's right. They have, haven't they? Yeah. 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 Um, I'm not having any luck with. It. Hang on. Give, give yeah. me one more second. Let me yeah. see what I can do. Your sound, your sound is clear, but uh, you're you're just a rainbow. That's all you are, just a just a rainbow uh, color color pattern there. Um, yeah. So I mean, I've often thought about I mean, what I wanted to do before I was uh, seriously thinking about a darts lunch, darts bar place was to start a coffee shop. They call it a kisaten in, here in uh, Japan. Kisaten is a a coffee shop. I thought that would be a great relaxing kind of business to have. Um, serve coffee, uh, offer yeah. some English, so offer some English conversation, you know, and so on. Uh, have a, a small set menu, you know, uh, some curry that you could, uh, you know, you got a pot of, uh, you know, a, a pot of rice and and a pot of curry there that you could uh, serve that up uh, very quickly and so on. And and uh, curry curry rice is a very popular. Uh, especially fast lunchtime meal here in Japan, especially among young people, it's very popular. So I thought, wow, that would be the way to go. Um, people come in there, see me and say, oh, here's my chance to practice English. You know, um, I thought that that would be a great, but as I did the calculations, I was thinking, okay, uh, the location that I was looking at was, you know, so many, you know, you know, a thousand or, you know, a thousand dollars a month or something like that for the rent. And then, the electricity, you know, was how much more for that. And then, uh, you know, the, the staff, you know, I could do most of it myself, but I couldn't do it all myself. I would need at least one or two other people there as staff and paying their salaries. And just as I calculated out, I thought, my God, I'd have to be basically wall to wall customers most of the day in order to, to really turn any kind of a profit. I just, yeah, man. Know, the, yeah. The math, it, the math didn't hard. come out for me. Right. Right, right, right. It's hard. It takes a lot. Right. Mm takes continual you know attention and that's one thing with the bar a little coffee shop like that you know they say you have the owner has to be there 24 mm -hmm. 7 basically yeah right right yeah um, and yeah it was, it was it was hard for me too i mean yeah. to be there yeah you know, i mean so i i think about time, it again yeah. now you know that uh you know now that i'm thinking of retiring i thought you know even more you know so uh do some you know, make you know we were what we were talking about an english school but do an English school slash coffee shop, you know, so people come in there kind of like, uh, you know, our friend that, that had that, it was called the free talk cafe. Remember that? I do. I remember right. that. Right. That, yeah. was, that was a cool little place. Yeah. Right. You know, I thought something like that, you know, and have events, you know, like a couple times a month, you know, and so on, uh, you know, uh, mm -hmm, get the mm -hmm. wife to help me out, set up a little uh, buffet style, <laughs> uh, you know, thing there so that people could come in and they, they pay a, a cover charge and that covers, you know, the, uh, you know, the, they can eat and, uh, you know, uh, drink uh, soft drinks or whatever, if they want alcohol, uh, you know, a little extra charge for that or something like that. But then they've got a chance to speak English, you know? Um, yeah. So I thought that that, you know, so I, I really thought that that free talk cafe was a great idea. Um, I didn't really like the, the actual physical, facilities there all that much i i always felt claustrophobic uh it was kind of claustrophobic yeah, yeah i remember that right but but then again like we just were talking about when you when you factor in the the rent and the salaries and the utilities 
uh, you got to basically crowd in as many bodies as you possibly can in order to make a make a go of it. So um, for sure, you're absolutely yeah. right. That's what it takes, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It's not for the faint of heart sometimes, right? It's not. It's not. Yeah. That's why I love to, to hear about, you know, major businesses today. I listen to a couple podcasts that are really interesting. One is uh, Freakonomics Radio, you know, and sometimes <laughs> they, 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 they give a few uh, stories of businesses who've really made it big. But then I found uh, this other po uh, podcast. It's called How I Built This. Mm. It is a really cool podcast about how businesses, you know, go through trials and tribulations and eventually make it right. And hmm. yeah, it's pretty, it's a, it's an eye opener. You should check cool. it out. It's cool. really kind of cool. cool. Yeah. This, this is a shout out to how I built this yeah. podcast. Give there it a shot. Go. If you're yeah. interested in business, that is. Yeah. And a lot of people aren't, you know, because business comes from the word, of course, busyness. Right. The act of being busy. Right. So that's right. Basically, you're busy all the time, period. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. yeah that's you know, which is another thing. I, I never felt confident enough in my ability to make that small business go to give up. You know my, you know my steady paychecks from the, you know, from my even from part time yeah. teaching. It's it's still a steady paycheck, you know. But to give that up, which I felt that I would need to do, or at least, you know greatly reduced the amount of teaching I was doing in order to be able to focus on the business. And uh, I, I just never felt that confident in the ability to make it go. For sure. For sure. I love teaching. So I kept teaching. Right. And it was, it was a great experience. I wanted to keep that in my life, you know, mm -hmm. but I remember times having very little sleep, <laughs> right? yeah. very, very little sleep, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> three or four hours. Yeah. Right. My friends yeah. are, you know, people who know me, they'll attest to that. You know, yeah. it's just, yeah. Yeah. Very, very little sleep, you know, yeah. uh, and, you know, yeah, just, only you know, fortunately, the first time, the first rendition of the bar, we, we were closed on Sundays. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was my day of respite, mm, of there relaxation. You yeah. yeah. Oh, but yeah, your, your, yeah. your, your day of sobriety. Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> the day of liver resting, right? Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> right. There you go. So if you, so I guess we probably touched on it a bit, but if you were to do a business now, Dan, you would go maybe English school route or. Well, like I said, I mean, the, the thing that yeah. appeals to me both is kind of this you know, multifaceted. So something like, you know, a coffee shop. Talk, that, cafe. Yeah, yeah. A coffee yeah. shop or, or you know, uh, maybe, a, a, you know, maybe alcohol, though not now during pandemic, you know, but, uh, you know, a coffee shop type thing that also offers conversation, right? Uh, so that has kind of a double appeal. If somebody wants to stop in for a quick bite and a, and a cup of coffee at lunchtime, they can do that. If they want to right. practice their English or something like that, or they just want to interact with a the foreigner, they can do that too. Awesome. Awesome. I think it'd be great. Mm. I think that'd be great. Yeah. yeah. I've got about eight or nine more years before I retire, eight mm -hmm. more years or so. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah. Uh, it's young. 65 is very young to retire and 63 in your case, is it? Yep. So yeah, very, very young. So yep. Yep. Uh, you know, you have to keep do something, doing something. Got to yeah. keep busy. Got to keep busy. Indeed. Yeah. Got to yeah. keep busy, man. Yeah. yeah. For sure. Yeah. Well, Dan, maybe you'll get a thousand or more YouTube subscribers and then, you know, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you'll be in the 10,000 club. Uh, yeah, that's what I, I need. You know, I yeah, I need I need you know like six six digits. Yeah, uh, in order to to make Woo! that uh, have uh, anything happen. You know, I yeah. but you know in in the last month anyway or the last the three weeks or so I've gone from six to thirty one. So you know that's I know that's, I know that's, that's like, pretty impressive, dude. Yeah, uh, <laughs> five five multi multiplied my viewership by five, so that's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Um, there you go. Yeah, 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 yeah. I went from like two to six to nine to twelve to sixteen. Now I'm at sixteen. Yeah, yeah right. There you yeah, go. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's cool. It's cool. Well, if I for can, me, it's for me, it's a hobby. Basically, yeah. it's fun. Yeah, yeah. sure. So, but if, if you... ever, if every month for the next year I can multiply my viewer base by five every month, you know, then yeah, then that'd make a go of it. But that's what I'd have to do, and I just don't see that as being sustainable. You know, unless yeah. Yeah. unless somebody finds me interesting in some big way. But yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. Hey, you never know. Maybe never one know. of your videos will go viral. Could be. Could be. Yeah. Uh, um, 
You'll yeah, have yeah. V you'll have VD before you know it. <laughs> viral Dan. <laughs> viral Dan. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Viral. I mean, yeah. But anymore, it seems like in order to go viral, you have to look really ridiculous. You know I mean? <laughs> you know, you have to, you have to be ready to be totally thoroughly embarrassed in order to, to go viral anymore. You know, those yeah. seems to be the ones. You know, but. Yeah. You got to do one of those, either the, the fake limb, you know, gags where <laughs> someone comes up and shakes your hand and the arm falls off or, or, you know, exploding something or, yeah. you know, you know, we, we used, like that. You used to see the, these videos of, of people like they would, they would throw a basketball, you know, like from, you know, full, uh, full court length, you know, and, or three quarters court length and, and make it, you know, and so on. Um, uh, and those were always, you know, like really, really wild. But then, uh, what you started seeing later, were guys that would show you, you know, how long it took. So I saw one group and they, they were like some ravine. There were one guy was standing up on, on the edge of a cliff and then down at the bottom of the ravine, ravine, you know, probably, Oh, probably a hundred meters or something below, you know, the cliff below. And they set up a basketball hoop. Right. Okay. And yeah, it, it took them like four days, you know, and the guy, you know, throwing, throwing basketballs, you know, they, they have these huge bags of basketballs. They'd haul up to the top of the cliff. Right. And then he'd just throw them one after the other, you know, uh, <laughs> oh trying, gosh. trying to make a basket. It took them like four days, but finally they, he made it right. Finally he made it. You know? And they kept filming this whole time, I guess. Huh? Kept filming. Yeah. Cause they had to, cause you didn't know they which one to, was right? going to go in. Right. Yeah. You know, so oh gosh, yeah. <laughs> but, eventually you know, one the, went in. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So usually, you know, usually those guys, you know, so you got like some guy driving by and a guy hangs out the side of the window and makes a basket or something like that you know yeah yeah, yeah. all yeah, these things sure. i mean they're they're amazing right but when you actually see you know what it takes to make one of those shots i mean yeah, in yeah, a way yeah. it's like okay so that wasn't you know that amazing you know if you try enough time you're going to get it but then on the other hand it's even more impressive because you realize how dedicated they are to spend like four days doing nothing but throwing yeah, basketballs you right. i was players. gonna say you, you have to have a lot of time on your hands that's right to, for that one man that's yeah right. yeah it's great. It's cool. Well, yeah. you know, maybe we'll, uh, we'll, we'll try to, you can try to do something like that or. Right. Yeah. I'll throw or, you, you off know. a cliff. And ah! see, if I can... <laughs> see if I can see if that video will go viral. Yeah. Dan, can you hear this? Do you want me to turn it up? <laughs> no, 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 no. I, my, my ears are fine. My ears are fine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. No. Okay. I know what we're going to do. I'm going to okay. teach you how to play guitar online oh my God. On, a li on a live, live video. That would be fun. Wouldn't it? That okay. Would be, Dan, yeah, put that... your finger here, put your finger here right. and strum. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you're left-handed. Gosh, that's going to make things difficult though. You're that, left-handed. That, that's yeah, what I mean, everybody gosh. always says, but it seems to me, you know, that, I mean, to me, I mean, everybody says that you know the the music is coming from their right hand, right? The the strings that they're plucking, that's where the music come from, and it's just like they're just like making small adjustments with their left hand, right? You know, it's like the music they're they're making it with their right hand. But to me, you know, the it seems to me the way I visualize it, the notes are just determined by the left hand, right? That's that's where your you know your the notes and chords. Think. No, I understand what you're saying. I I know where you're coming from. You so would think that the dominant hand would be better at that, right? Right. Right. Yeah, and I I can I understand that, and perhaps it would be, but you know most people start out playing right with the right hand strumming right and right hand. right. So yeah, I, so because I, I think I, it translates from piano, the piano bass notes on the left mm, hand, or mm, mm. right that goes in in with that too. They, they right. can coordinate with the the rhythm and bass notes. And see, I, I played so, keyboard yeah. a little bit, and I okay. you know I mean my, so I, I I'm not ambidextrous, but I mean there are a lot of skills you know. So like you know playing the keyboard, yeah. I mean I'm you know I'm comfortable with my right hand you know as much as my left hand, you know, and certain things. So, I mean, growing up left-handed, you, you tend to, to, to develop the skills of, of using your right hand in a lot of circumstances simply because, you know, things aren't made for lefties, you know? Right. Well, that would be interesting to see if it mm -hmm. would, would, would work out better like that. Yeah. Maybe we should do that. Yeah. I have well, a guitar I could lend you. you know? Okay. Sure. Yeah, we could do that. That'd be let's, that would be kind of interesting. Let's try to yeah. do that. That would be interesting. Yeah. yeah. That'd be better than my, my other plan. I, I saw this thing. Uh what's it called? Uh, it's some kind of a an electronic ukulele that all right. It it has lights uh under the, the fretboard, right? And it lights uh -huh. up 
you know, and it's all computer controlled in there. And so it lights up to show you, you know, the fingering for, for each chord that you're going to play on the ukulele. You know, I thought, oh, you know, maybe that's what I need. But no, that's, I, yeah, there I, you go, I right? got you. So I don't need that. Right. You, you know? got me. And it'll be fun. <laughs> me trying to explain online where to put your fingers, I yeah, think, would be yeah. kind of funny. I mean, you know, the bonus there, I mean, people can laugh at me, but then again, they get kind of a free guitar lesson from you, you know, by watching that's what you're true. teaching me. Yeah. So that's, true, true. Yeah. Right. So, uh, a comedy show and an educational show all in one. I mean, all wrapped <laughs> up into one. <laughs> all right. Indeed. Yeah. Let's do that. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. You got to have some fun with it. You know? Yeah. yeah. Man, yeah we may have found man. our niche there. Jeez, yeah. That's our niche, man. Yeah. That's our, let's do it. Let's try it. Okay. <laughs> I'll get that guitar to you. Cool. Cool, dude. Yeah. Good, yeah. man. Yeah. yeah. I so, was actually yeah. thinking about you know, driving my scooter up to see you today, but, uh, I'm worried about yeah. the weather. It's like it's I said, it varies 50. between 60 and 80% chance of rain most of the day today. So I don't want to get stuck in that on my scooter. Yeah. No, let, let's, let's hold off on that. Maybe yeah. tomorrow or Monday will be better. Yep. yep. We could Sounds do it good. then, you know. Sounds good. Sounds good, Dan. Let's, let's call it a day, shall we? We shall. We shall. We it shall. Is a day. It's, it's a day. That's right. It's yep. a fun day. Yeah. All right. So Excellent. thanks everyone Thank for you, watching. Man. Thanks yep. for watching everyone. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Cool. And we will catch you again, hopefully tomorrow. Yep. If you're around, Dan, let's do yep. something later Absolutely. today or tomorrow. Yeah. Absolutely. Cool. Sounds good. All right. Later, Beautiful. man. Great. Okay. Yeah. Later. Catch y'all later. <laughs>